The rise in inflation rate in food and agricultural produce poses a challenge that stares us in the face. Our dependence on imported food items also contributes to the pressure on foreign exchange. According to a 2019 report by the Central Bank of Nigeria, it was estimated that over 1.2 million metric tons of poultry meat is smuggled into Nigeria from Benin Republic. Uh, these opened a huge gap in the poultry market. Just how can this gap be closed? On the show today, we will be looking at the huge potentials in poultry vis-à-vis uh, -vis meeting the consumption needs of Nigerians. Welcome to Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonia. Welcome back. Nigeria's manufacturing sector recorded a real GDP growth of 4.29% year-on-year, an improvement from the corresponding quarter of 2020 and the preceding quarter of the second quarter of 2021 by 5.80% and 0.80% respectively, while the agricultural sector grew 1.22% year-on-year in real terms in the third quarter of 2021. That's and more rounded up business Nigeria this week. Take a look. Nigeria's manufacturing sector recorded a real GDP growth of 4.29% year-on-year, an improvement from the corresponding quarter of 2020 and the preceding quarter of the second quarter of uh, 2021 by 5.80% and 0.80% respectively. This information was contained in the quarterly Gross Domestic Product Report published by the National Bureau of Statistics. The nominal GDP growth for the sector, however, was recorded at 33.73%, reflecting a growth of 19.18% from quarter 3 of 2020 and a decline of 5.60% uh, quarter on quarter. The contribution of manufacturing to the nominal GDP in the third quarter of 2021 was 15.59% higher than its contribution to the nominal GDP in the corresponding period of 2020 at 13.56% and higher than the contribution in quarter two of 2021 at 14.18%. Nigeria's agricultural sector grew 1.22% year-on-year in real terms in the third quarter of 2021. This is a decrease of 0.17% points from the corresponding period of 2020 and a decrease of 0.08% points from the preceding quarter, which recorded a growth rate of 1.30%. It grew on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis at 39.83%. This was disclosed in, in the third quarter of 2021 GDP report released by the National Bureau of Statistics on Thursday. The report said that Nigeria's gross domestic product, GDP, grew by 4.03% year-on-year in real terms in the third quarter of 2021. Power consumers nationwide may start to pay more for electricity following plans by the federal government to carry out a review of power tariff. This came as the federal government said on Wednesday that it had commenced the procurement of 4 million meters meant to be distributed free of charge to unmetered power users nationwide. It also put the number of unmetered electricity consumers in Nigeria at about 8 million adding that over 860,000 meters were distributed for free to power users on the Phase 0 of the National Mass Metering Program. The federal government, 36 states of the federation and the 774 local government areas of the country shared the sum of 671.91 billion naira as the revenue that accrued into the coffers of the government for the month of October. This was disclosed in a report signed by the Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, which was released during the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee meeting in Lagos on Wednesday. The report noted that for the month of October 2021, the gross revenue available from value-added tax was 166.28 billion naira, as against 170.85 billion naira distributed in the preceding month, resulting in a decrease of 4.56 billion naira. Well, joining us right now is the co-founder and chief executive officer of AgriCore International, Nigeria's fast-growing agriculture producing, processing and export company. And it has invested $4 billion into acquiring poultry production facilities across three states 
in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Many thanks for joining us. I'm Kenneth Temobi Ajalu on the show this evening. Thank you for having me. All right. In my intro, I did say that 1.2 million metric tons of poultry meat are smuggled into Nigeria from Benin Republic. How did we get there and what um, are the effect of um, these uh, on the nation's economy? I mean, so typically it's, it's a function of demand supply gaps, right? And um, as a consuming nation, right, um, the, the poultry industry itself is set at about 1.5 million tons a year. You know, and so um, that shows you that the larger proportion of it is being imported into the country. It means the consumption is in excess of the supply locally. So the production in Nigeria does not meet with the demand, you know, of, of poultry consumption. Nigeria consumes roughly mm, about okay. 3 million birds every single day. Mm. You know, that's to show you how much that's is huge. required to mm. be able to meet that demand. So I think um, uh, most of this demand is now met by importing and as a result of the ban mm. on um, poultry products as well. Um, most of the smugglers will have to go through that route. Okay, so is it a thing that uh, we are not capable enough as a country to meet these uh, demands? Uh, one would have thought that uh, it's a huge opportunity that has presented itself and the Nigerians can actually just key into the value chain. Yes, it's, it's actually a tremendous um, opportunity for um, those in the agricultural space and also agricultural enthusiasts mm -hmm. to be able to tap into that opportunity. But you know that production has its, um, has its um, lots of challenges as well, right? You look at issues around insecurity. You look at issues around, you know, the rising prices of the core raw materials required in the poultry industry, uh, which is feed. And it's a composition of maize and soya bean. You know, our production is not up to what is required. You know, just a few months ago, the federal government through the Central Bank of Nigeria had to even approve for the importation of, of maize, mm. um, granted, you know, um, you know the, um, that requirement to four major um, feed companies in Nigeria to be able to import the deficit amount of maize. Uh, came to about 240,000 tons just to be able to meet with the requirements for poultry and other you know, um, businesses in that space. So it's, if I have to really bolt in, uh, it is really amazing that uh, we have to, uh, as much as possible, import maize just to cater to the poultry needs of uh, the farmers involved in that particular sector. One would have thought that we had um, enough arable land to, you know, to you know, cultivate a maize, sorghum, or whatever it is needed to get the feeds for poultry. Yeah, it's, it's a process. You know that um, smallholder farmers in Nigeria would have to go through four major challenges mm. to be able to come out on top. Um, productivity issues are very low because um, a lot of them don't use the right um, um, kinds of improved seeds that will give them the best yields. Okay. Post-harvest losses are very, very, very high. Some, in some cases, it's between 40 and 60 percent, right? And then access to finance... We're getting there, right? It used to be almost non-existent, but a lot of programs are coming in place that allows the farmers to be able to access finance from microfinance institutions, you know, the CBNs and Cobra funds, and lots of banks are now open to providing that finance. So I think we're beginning to get there by pumping the required amount of finance mm -hmm. and training to the farmers to be able to increase their yields and meet up with these requirements, as well as unlock even the opportunities in the arable lands that are not cultivated. Let's talk about um, finance um, yet uh, for another minute, uh, you know, because uh, you talked about the CBN um, Anchor Boroughs program because mm -hmm. a lot of people would say there have been several enough you know, such programs over the years in you know, Operation Feed the Nation and uh, yeah, as much as we've had in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. But a whole lot of time, this particular funding don't really get to the rural farmers, as it were. I've even heard some cases where people cite political farmers, you know, accessing this fund where the ordinary farmers who really need the funds don't get them. So, I mean, I might not be able to necessarily speak about mm. the political side of the funding okay. going to a couple of sure. people. But what I know for a fact is um, the amount of finance in the agricultural space right now is a lot, right? And then the real farmers are beginning to access the funding. Now, in terms of the um, degree at which they're able to access it and the ease of accessing it, that's a different conversation. And the government is also trying as much as possible to allow the private sector to be able to stimulate this growth as against, you know, artificially trying to stimulate that growth as a government. The government should focus on creating a regulatory framework that allows these businesses and these farmers to be able to thrive and then allow most of the financial institutions to be able to um, actually go through the normal credit process to be able to give out credit to farmers that are worthy of accessing those, that credit. But, but I think the, the numbers are going up by the day. Okay, let me quote you here. Uh, a, a press release I, uh, I read, uh, you said... Um, 
our dependence on imported food items also contribute to the pressure on foreign exchange. I want to find out how, how we can change uh, that particular narrative uh, you know, vis a vis poultry production. When it comes to imported uh, items, would you, do you think Nigerians will come to a stage where Nigerians would actually want to eat locally bred chicken uh, as opposed to you know, imported ones which are already frozen? So I think uh, it's, it's a function of availability. Um, yeah. Like food security has four pillars, right? Okay availability, accessibility, fit for use, and all of these things are done sustainably, mm -hmm. right? So Nigerians, I'll give you a typical example, when there was a ban on the importation of rice some few years ago, Nigeria had an annual importation bill of about 744,000 metric tons, wow. right? During the partial ban, by the next year, the numbers dropped to less than 70,000 metric tons. As of today, we barely import up to 25,000 metric tons of rice, mm -hmm. and we have been consuming rice, so it had been able to stimulate local production of rice in various regions. We're beginning to see private sector players, foreign players even come into the market to start setting up um, rice mills and processing systems and backward integrating into production of things. So I think that um, in the poultry space, it's the same thing, right? If you have um, the poultry market is about, like I said, 1.6 trillion naira, mm. you know, in size. That's massive. And more than 70% of it's imported. If you put 70% on 1.3, um, 1.6 trillion, that's about 980 billion naira that you're exporting, or rather you're importing into the country. Mm. What that does is it stifles the local producers of these commodities, right? Or this particular um, agricultural produce. But when you're able to ease up and ensure that the production side of things can work, you're able to put as much interventions in the production of commodities required for the feed millers to be able to make access um, the, the feeds to the poultry farmers, fish farmers, and the other guys playing in the livestock yeah. space. You're able to stimulate that growth, but shipping out 980 billion you know, um, naira in, in opportunity yeah. right, to other parties outside of the country is what creates the unemployment rate and you know the reduced production locally. Well, Kenneth, I understand all of that. Let's just uh, uh, paint a scenario here. Mm -hmm. The federal government did, in fact, uh, you know, uh, ban all sort of uh, mm -hmm. importation of poultry. And uh, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. we have to you know produce all that we need to eat as a nation. Yeah. That's uh, poultry mm -hmm. specifically. Now, mm -hmm. you know, there's a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people are now getting into this uh, uh, particular industry. Let's talk about some of um, the botanics and, uh, you know, for instance, uh, in the value chain, so, uh, you know, storage and all of that. Uh, do we have all that it takes in terms of capacity and all that to ensure that uh, we can actually produce for a long time and uh, over time we'll not be talking about uh, we can't find them poetry in the market? So I think that the capacity is increasing as the industry becomes, you know, more advanced, right? Um, for example, we just got into this space with a capacity of pushing in about 4 million birds. Mm. You know, and that in itself requires that we must have our production systems in place, mm. we must have our processing systems in place, and then we must have our post-processing systems in place to ensure that we're able to distribute the products. As more players are beginning to get into this space, and as private sector sees the benefits that comes with all of these opportunities, mm. the, the space in itself will begin to um, advance to the level that is required. But in the interim, mm. the systems... I want you to grow. enlighten us some more. You talked about um, in, um, in you intend to invest uh, 4 billion naira, and that from what I've heard, uh, that would entail um, 142 poultry prints yes. across um, three states, mm -hmm. and it will boost local poultry production by at least 3 million poultry birds per annum. I just want you to do the math here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so typically, we, we, it's not about we are planning to... We have invested 4 okay. billion... Mm. You know, and we have acquired um, 142 poultry pens. That's a lot. That's know, massive. In three locations, at mm. with um, an annual capacity of a minimum of three million birds, and we're able to max out at four million. So what mm. that does for us is, we are able to have the capacity to employ 1,500 people on our farms. Oh wow! Yes, job creation at that job as well. Job creation. Yeah, we're able to train people on how poultry can be called. So it's not rocket science. No, it's right? not. We tested the model and we've seen that even youths without you know, um, agricultural backgrounds and knowledge on poultry production yeah. have the capacity to learn and move on from there. So basically for us, it's putting those perns into commercial purpose, getting these youth entrepreneurs to be able to produce the required amount of volume and then processing and getting it into the market. I think that's um, one of the things that we have seen 
comes with a set of challenges, mm. you know, to ensure that we are running at 100% capacity, but we keep building every single day and our, our job is to be able to expand that number drastically before 2025. But is it all glamorous? Is it all rosy as it were? For instance, uh, I'm a school leaver mm. and um, I'm fresh out of school and uh, <laughs> I... I don't want to go through the rigors of I'm looking for uh, for white collar jobs, and mm -hmm. I just want to be my own entrepreneur, and yes. I want to get into poetry because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people do mm -hmm. that. You know, you know, if you were to uh, walk us through it, is it something that anyone can just come in, or is it really challenging as it is? So, as with all forms of entrepreneurship, right, it comes with a set of challenges. But um, what we've also seen our system has been able to do is we are able to handhold these entrepreneurs and show them when we say. Brooding. This is what brooding means. You take them to the brooding house, you show them what brooding truly means, how you're able to care for the birds from day one to day 14, day 10 to day 14, and then you move them from the brooding house to the growing house, and then you show them how to care for the birds when you see certain symptoms. So it's about holding their hands, because at the end of the day, that's the training process that is required. So it's not all rosy. You know, even with climate change and all of that, we saw, for instance, in some of our pilots, scorching effect of the sun increased our mortality you know and what did we need to do mm. we went back to local farmers that had local experiences and have been able to go around these issues in the last five to ten years and we learned so all of that experience is what you know these entrepreneurs will be able to would try to unbundle to these um, entrepreneurs and you know carry them along in the entire process okay uh, I, I i read something somewhere about um, a project um, eclipse 2025 uh, what's um, that about and what does it intend to achieve 2025 is about um, four years yeah. from now so i mean that's uh our ambitious um, target to, okay. to see us um, growing a cumulative of 40 million birds by 2025. And it rests on... Yeah, that's that's <laughs> like 10, yes. 10 million birds annually in the next yes. four years. Yes. You know, um, as of today, our capacity sits at 3 to 4 million birds per annum. Mm. So it means we will need to grow at least by 16 160%, um, 1,600% to be able to meet up with that target. So invariably now, if um, the government provides some um, the right atmosphere, you mm -hmm. know, for business to thrive, that, that's the infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, the power, the roads and all mm -hmm. of that. Can we come to, can we get to an extent where um, uh, our poetry, uh, chicken, uh, other um, poetry, uh, meat, uh, will not be like a luxury item for, for most Nigerians? Because most, um, right now, most people, tend to eat poultry, you know, sparingly, not what they could do, like, um, uh, daily if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. With all of these uh, things that I mentioned now, would we get to an extent where uh, Nigerians can actually, you know, go to the market and be able to buy poultry without having to, you know, pay an arm and a leg? Of course. I think um, locally we're beginning to get it. You know, um, the pricing is beginning to come in our favour. Right. Is it because the yeah. last time I went to the market, <laughs> poetry was so expensive? Yeah, I mean, but I mean, when I say the pricing is beginning to come in our okay. favor, it's vis a vis what is obtainable outside the country and also the cost of the input and all of those numbers. I think we're beginning to get it. You know, the more we're able to grow the market locally, mm. you know, the more we're able to um, consolidate on the pricing and ensure that it is affordable for every Nigerian. Mm. But poultry in itself is, um, represents more than 40% of meat right. consumption. So. All right, in 30 seconds, uh, I just want to, you to do some free lecture for Nigerians. Uh, in case uh, someone is watching and uh, he's thinking of being an entrepreneur and uh, he uh, is saying that I don't really have so much cash, you know, what would you advise him to do? Your camera is free. <laughs> All right, so typically um, it's, um, there's, there's access to lots of information. There's access to um, funding um, from um, you know, financial institutions. Um, we're also here to help. And um, the most important part is to be able to make that decision to be a part of the agricultural um, space, and then you know all the resources um, available um, can be made can be made available to you. And we're more than here to help. Thank you. All right, thank you so much indeed. Uh, that's just um, some free uh, lecture, what you would have paid, you know, to get some sort of master class uh, in the university. We must say a very big thank you to you, um, Kennedy Obiajolo. Uh, he is um, the CEO of um, AgriCore International. Many thanks for sharing your time, your thoughts, and of course, uh, you know, trying to, you know, instill some sort of entrepreneurship in Nigerians. <laughs> we do appreciate it. Thank you so much. We appreciate it as well. All right, uh, that's as much as we can take. Let's do it again next time. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching.